One of the most important things to remember is that uh, life is not promised. So therefore you have to utilize the moment and be aware of the fact that what you do today will have impact tomorrow. So the reason I went on the Freedom Ride was because I realized that if we wanted to make change, we could not wait. We had to seize the opportunity. My interest in bringing about change was not so much in terms of my grandchildren for the future as it was my grandmother. I wanted her to come early enough so she would be able to experience some of the change that we were able to accomplish. After having lived all those years under the bondage of uh, segregation and had to endure insults and uh, have systemic oppression, that now she would be able to, at least in her final days, be able to have that kind of appreciation. So there was an urgency with my involvement. And uh, although I went to jail many times, I had to learn to make adjustments to uh, the jail situation. And so we had the training in nonviolence, which helped us to deal with all situations in the movement. Not only the demonstrations, uh, but also the arrest and being incarcerated. And during my life of the movement, I have been incarcerated 27 times and kidnapped twice and beaten up uh, more than once. But those uh, were experiences that I uh, realized helped to give me strength and determination. So it's not what happens to you that makes the difference is how you choose to respond to those situations. So even though I knew that people who uh, attacked us in the movement uh, did it because they were angry with us, I had to realize that the only way that I could survive and respond is by using love. And first you have to love yourself and then you also have to learn to love others even those who uh, seem like they're enemies, seem uh, like they do hateful things. And the main thing is that we must never allow others to cause us to behave the way they do when they uh, show these kind of hateful uh, spirits. And the change that we're talking about is not only the change on the outside, but we have to be aware that we have to have the change on the inside. And that we have to work on on a daily basis. And that as we continue to work for the outside change, we know it's possible because we can feel the inside change. So nothing could come on the outside unless it's already on the inside. So when we face the uh, difficulties and discrimination and oppression. Uh, even today, we realize that the work is not over. It's a continuous job, and we have to strive towards that change as often as we can. So we want to spend our time helping to train leadership so that the people who are young people now will be able to have those tools that they need so that they can help to bring about the change among their peers and change in the system. That uh, there are those who want to take us back, but they can't take us back if we continue to march forward. And that's the thing that we've got to learn to do. We cannot rest. We must be able to uh, take a stand. We must be able to see issues clearly but then more importantly, we got to know what to do about changing those issues. And we cannot do that unless we know how to mobilize and organize. And that's where the nonviolence training comes in. It helps people learn to use those skills to be able to effectively make the change. Bernard Lafayette.